Biology is the native language of the environment. Uh, cells manufacture things all the time. You're from Ginkgo Bioworks. Could you tell us more about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me here today. I'm excited to share with you why Ginkgo Bioworks fits into the circular economy platform. And then, of course, to hear from all of you, because it sounds like we're so aligned and we've never sat here together uh, before this moment. So going backwards, biology is the native language of the environment. Uh, cells manufacture things all the time without any human intervention. At Ginkgo, what we're doing is using synthetic biology, which is a technology, to produce uh, organisms and molecules, again, using biology as the tool behind them. And we've talked today about regenerative materials all day. Ginkgo Bioworks is a platform using that, uh, the, the biological processes I mentioned to, to deliver regenerative ingredients. Um, Ginkgo works as a platform, so you can think of us as an Amazon Web Services for synthetic biology. So when we talk to our customers, we know that becoming more circular is, of course, difficult, and these targets are difficult to, to reach. So we work with them, and we understand what is it that we can do by leveraging biology to, to deliver the molecules that you need. Um, so there's a few different ways. So, of course, in some cases, companies are already using uh, regenerative materials in their supply chains. But those materials are still derived from nature. They might be difficult to harvest. And while they're regenerative, they're still not as efficient as they'd like, in which case, of course, Ginkgo can support them. And then there's the cases where companies do have pain points in their supply chains, something that's keeping them from being circular, something that's keeping them from reaching another target. And again, we leverage the uh, engineering of a cell to provide that exact molecule that they're looking for. And this is across industries, I think safe to say every industry that's included today. So of course, food and pharma, which we've heard examples of for years, but now cosmetics, materials, energy, you name it. So synthetic biology is kind of like chemistry, right? There's something about the opportunity of it. It's, it's presumably it's not ubiquitously good. How do you orientate that towards regenerative or circular economy principles? What do you need to do to ensure those positive outcomes are happening? Yeah, I mean, I think by definition, the industry, this industry, synthetic biology, it's as circular as it, as it gets. If you really want to look into the processes, we start out with ingredients as simple as yeast and sugar and a big fermentation tank, and you design for the product that you're looking for. So imagine creating an ingredient without the plant. This is already being done with many examples. Rose oil is one. Instead of an entire uh, plant, you have just the ingredient. Uh, and then, alternatively, you can look at plant, uh, animal-based products. So imagine if you could derive squalene without the whale. And again, this is already being done by the industry. So to me, that's as circular as it gets, and that's what really excites me about it. And I'll speak uh, somewhat to my excitement around the entire industry, not just what we're doing at Ginkgo, but they go hand in hand. And some context for you is Ginkgo Bioworks went public last year. We're very proud in the largest biotech IPO in history. And the reason I share that is because I think it's indicative of the trust that the public has and the excitement and belief that the public has in a platform that can use biology to make ingredients more sustainable or supply chains more resilient. Um, and it's not just that. I think the timing of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation having so much content featuring the word biology uh, is another indication there. And then if you look at trends and uh, you know, the, the decreasing cost of DNA, reading, writing, and synthesis, and then the needs of our planet, which all of our speakers have alluded to today, it just demonstrates that biomanufacturing is not a shift that might happen. It's one that has already begun to happen. Um, so that's one thing that makes me very excited. Now, what does that mean for Ginkgo? The novel aspect of being on a platform is the more work we do, the better our platform gets, and the better we hope that the industry gets. And so we're not limited by any means to a single industry or a single ingredient or a single molecule. I pointed to some examples in the beauty industry because that's more interesting to some than pharmaceuticals, but their list is really endless. So imagine if you can make polyester without the petrochemicals. We're already making uh, you know, alternative meat items without the animals. Um, there's a whole list of, medi um, of essential medicines from the World Health Organizations that people don't realize are still derived from natural products. 
And so the opportunities are vast and huge. And I think coupling the excitement from the industry and the excitement from, uh, you know, from like, again, like when we went public, along with the needs of the planet, and then seeing our platform get better and better and putting more products on our platform, it really goes hand in hand.